Hi guys, my name is Christine and I'm a dating, relationship and personal development coach and today I'm talking about how to avoid one-sided love so you'll never experience unrequited love or unreciprocated love ever again. Okay, so if you've been, um, have you, if you've ever experienced a one-sided love, unrequited love, um, unreciprocated love, right, all of that, all of that kind of thing, I think that they all mean the same thing, basically, but if you've ever experienced that, and you don't want to go through it again, I've got some tips for you, okay, so this is something that I experienced many times, many, 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 many times, um, during my lifetime, um, especially when I was a teenager, and when I was an early adult, I, it, it seemed like most of the girls that I liked never liked me, right, and it was really annoying, but the, but the thing with me as well is that I took ages to get over these women, when in reality, you know, I should have just been a lot more quick about it, instead of just, just pining over them for months and years and things like that, it just wasted so much time, and when you're so invested in someone, you know, you, it's, it's very difficult for you to look out for other options, right, so it took a long while for me to get over these women because I just wasn't looking for anyone else. I was thinking, oh, maybe if I'm their friend first, if I just keep on being their friend, or if I write them a love letter, or if I write them a long message on Facebook and I explain my feelings and tell them how much I love them, maybe that will get them to like me more. None of those things ever worked, right? And the waiting around for them never worked either, okay? They either ended up in a new relationship with someone else other than me, or they just continue to stay not interested, okay? So how can you avoid this then, okay? So the first way you can avoid it, and this is the main way you can avoid it, is to don't waste time. Like the moment you get a crush on someone, the moment you start finding someone attractive, let your intentions be known. Don't pussyfoot around the subject and I'll be like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll be their friend first. You know, this is the kind of thing that I used to do. I'm like, I'll be their friend first. I'll just test the waters. I'll be there. I'll, go, I'll be a really good friend and then I'll tell them that I like them, right? And then by the time that happened, I was already deeply in love with them because I'd spent so much time being their friend and getting to know them and things like that. And like six months down the line or a year down the line, I'll say that I was in love with them and it just always went pear-shaped it never went the way that I wanted it to basically it never went how I expected it in my mind it's kind of like that scene in 500 days of summer where there's like they're like this, there's like the split screen like reality versus what actually happened it's a really good movie to watch especially if you're dealing with this kind of thing um because it because it really is a, it's just a really good story it just shows that so well um but that's what I my thought process was but what was really going on I think was that I was scared right, I was scared, I was scared that if I said how I felt straight away, um, I would get rejected, right, and that probably was true, because a lot of the girls that I did like when I was a teenager and when I was an early adult, um, were women that were just unavailable to me, or they were straight, so they were never going to be interested in me anyway, right, um, so I, w I was picking really inappropriate people to, like, start liking and have a crush on, right, and things like that, so, you know, it's just, it was just ridiculous, really, so, but anyway, the point is that when you start liking someone, when you start feeling an attraction for them, the best thing for you to do is to let your intentions be known, now, that doesn't mean that you should be like, oh, I really like you, or I'm in love with you, and write them a long letter, or even just saying something like, I love you too soon, the best thing for you to do is if you start developing an interest in a woman or a guy, whoever you are watching this, the best thing to do is just say to them, hey, this is a bit out of the blue, but I'd really like to get to know you better. I think you're really cute. Um, when are you available to hang out, right? Now, they're going to know what that means, you know, when you say that. They're going to automatically know this person is asking me out on a date and it's because that they like me. And they'll be able to tell as well because you'll probably come up to them a bit sheepish, looking a bit shy, which is fine. It's okay to be, you don't have to storm up to them and look like Superman or something like that. It's okay to be a little bit nervous about it, right? Because you're going up to someone and telling them basically with your heart on your sleeve that you'd like to take them out on a date, right? So it's okay to be a little bit nervous about that, okay? You don't have to be completely stoic and uh, not have any emotion there, okay? It's okay to feel nervous, right? So let yourself off the hook, right? It's okay to do that, do that kind of thing. It's okay to feel that way. It's okay to come across even nervous as well, right? Because you're still doing way better than what most people would do. Most people wouldn't even get to that stage. They'll just, they'll do like the, the thing that I used to do, which was like try and be their friend first and not tell them how they felt like a year down the line or six months. But the fact that you're going up and you're being bold and you're asking them out, they'll, even if they reject you, they'll at least respect you 
for having the guts to go up to them and just speak your truth. Um, so that's the best thing that you can do because then you know straight away, right? You should know straight away whether they like you or whether they don't, right? And then you'll know whether to waste more time on this person or to simply move on. So if they reject you and they say, oh, sorry, no, I've got a boyfriend or no, I'm in a relationship or no, I'm married or no, sorry, I just don't see you in that way, right? Or sorry, no, I'm just not looking for a relationship right now. I'm not really looking to date anyone right now. If they say anything like that, then you know to just say, okay, no worries. Just take us a compliment and then you move on with your life, right? And you find someone else, right? To have that, you know, find a new person to put your focus on, right? Um, Instead of waiting around for them. And if they say, oh yeah, I'm free this Saturday, then you can be like, great. How about we meet at this restaurant at this time, right? On this day, right? So if they say like, oh yeah, I'm free Saturday, you say, great, let's meet there. Let's meet at seven o'clock at this restaurant or something like that, right? That's all you need to do. And then they'll be like, great, yeah, see you then. And you'll be like, oh yeah, awesome, see you then. And then you just leave, right? And then you just wait for the date and you hang out on the date, right? So it's also, it's always a good idea when you're asking someone out, um, when you're about to ask someone out to have some places in mind where to meet up, Right, so if you know of a good restaurant or you know of a good place to go and get a coffee or go, go go to a bar or something like that, as long as it's somewhere nice and quiet, always make sure it's somewhere nice and quiet. Um, you know, it's always a good idea to have a few places in mind which will be good, which you already may even like. That means you maybe you even comfortable with going to because maybe you know some of the staff there or something like that. So it's really cool to like um, to, to already have a place in mind as opposed to being like, okay, great, where do you want to go? And then they're like, oh, I don't know, uh, where, where do you want to go? What's close to you? You know, things like that. Just set up a place in your head already that you'd like to take that person on a date to, right? So it's always a good idea to do that kind of thing. So you're not just sitting there standing there like, oh, oh what do I do now? What do I do now? Where do we meet up? Where do you want to go? Because it's just going to make you look really indecisive and weak if you keep on saying something like, oh, but where do you want to go? Where would you like to go? Don't do that. Just have a place in mind. If they don't like the place that say they know someone who works there and they don't like that person or they don't like going to that restaurant, they'll just say, oh, no, no, it's okay. okay. Is it right? If maybe we should go to this place or no, I don't really like that restaurant. So maybe it would be a good idea actually to have more than one place in mind, right? So have like a couple of places that you like, which you can always back on, uh, fall back on, right? Um, But again, like if they if they reject you, just move on. Just say, you know what, that's great. Just take as a compliment. um, uh, Enjoy your day, and then just get on with the rest of your life and focus on someone else. Okay. So the goal is right. The goal is for you. If you want to avoid one-sided love, unreciprocated love, is to always focus on people that say yes when you ask them out. If you like someone, if you think that they're cute, if you think that they're good looking, if you think that they're nice in some way, whatever way that you like, right? If they've got that special thing that you love, then go up to them, ask them out, right? And keep on doing that until you find someone that says yes, right? Now, of course, it's a lot easier to, to avoid this if you're on like a dating app or uh, or something like that or a dating website because most of the people on there that you match with or you start talking to are probably already a little bit interested in you. Otherwise, they wouldn't be talking to you. Um, so, you know, there's that. Um, but if you are wanting to approach people, then this is a really good way to do it. And this is one of the best ways that you can avoid unreciproc- unreciprocated love, unrequited love, one-sided love that you're going to be able to avoid this so well now of course obviously you can't avoid rejection altogether when you ask someone out they prop there's a chance that they will say no of course there's always a chance that they're going to say no so that may feel like you may get rejected but as long as you're moving on from them fast and you're trying to find someone who does say yes it shouldn't get to the point where it's one-sided love right um so that's one of the best ways that you can avoid that. So one of the big time wasters then is if you get rejected uh, or something like that and you continue to pine after them, you continue to like, oh, maybe we'll just be friends and maybe if she gets to know me better or if he gets to know me better, then maybe he'll start falling for me or um, believing that at some point basically that you can change their mind because the truth is, is that if they've already rejected you, then it's very unlikely that in the future that you're going to be able to change their mind. Okay, if they've already rejected you, they, they probably aren't attracted to you. Now, that doesn't mean that they, their mind can't be changed, right? Uh, but but if they've already rejected you, it means that the chances are very, very, very slim. And 
I personally like to always put myself in the majority and not in the rare cases, right? So what I mean by that is, is that if you get rejected by someone, right, the majority vote, basically, <laughs> right, the majority of people can't win that person back, right? That person, you, you can't change that person's mind if they reject you, right? So I put myself in that category of the majority, of the majority of cases. But of course, there are some rare cases where the, their minds do change, right? But again, it's best to focus on and move on, right? It's always best to assume that you're in the majority and that they're not interested and there's not really much you can do about it. So with that being said, move on, right? Ask them out. If they don't say yes, move on right? And all you have to do is when you ask them out, I'll just repeat it again for you. Say, hey, you know what, this is a bit random, um, but I actually think that you're really cute. When are you available to hang out, right? That's all you need to ask, and they'll give you all of the information that they know. If they like you, they will tell you when they're available, okay? And if they don't, well, then you know to move on, okay? And that's the best way you can avoid it. Just you, you treat your time very wisely, and like it's a precious resource. Do not waste your time on women, on guys that do not say yes, exactly yes, or telling you when they're available, when you ask them when they're available, right? If they give you wishy-washy answers like, um, oh, I'm not really sure where I am in my life right now, uh, I'm not really looking to date anyone, or they just flat out say no, then you walk away from them completely, right? And you just say, take it as a compliment, and you just move on, and you move on to the next person, okay? And you just keep on doing that until you find that one person that you really like and they really like you as well. So thank you so much for watching. And this was a video requested by a viewer. So if there's anything you'd like me to discuss in a future video, then please leave it down in the comments. And if you would like to get in touch with me personally, then please go to www.christianloveridge.com. And I shall talk to you again very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>